compost should be mature when it's sold or distributed. Or should it? Or is it? Forty years ago, we composted to create a product rich in beneficial microbes that would provide disease resistance in our crops. Maturity was important. It's still important for many of us. Composting is now more often a waste management tool where stability is more important than maturity. If the compost is spread on agricultural land for its nutrient and organic matter benefit, does it really need to be mature? More on this in another video. In these series of videos, I will explore compost maturity and stability and how we measure them. Compost maturity is important for three reasons. First, Mature compost is more likely to have the diversity of beneficial microorganisms that benefit our plants and potentially reduce disease. Second, a mature compost normally does not further heat up and or smell bad when it's stored. And third, a mature compost doesn't have any risk of phytotoxicity for plants. Compost maturity refers to the degree of decomposition or humification of the compost. A humification test is difficult to do, so we normally opt for stability testing. A stability test measures the amount of microbial activity, either by reheating, by carbon dioxide evolution, or oxygen consumption. With composting, we expect microbial activity to decrease as the compost becomes mature. With a stability test, we assume that the only limitation for microbial activity is the availability of carbon. We can stabilize compost in a few ways, including by drying it. Microbes swim in a water layer around the particles in compost, and as the water content decreases, the microbe's ability to survive decreases as well. So I can take any organic material, dry it, and it becomes stable. We know this from drying food to preserve it. A stability test is not always the best measure of maturity. Here is one example. I took a sample of product from a countertop composter and I sent it to the lab for testing. The result indicated that the product was stable and therefore it could be interpreted that it was a mature compost. This example alerts us to two red flags. First we must understand the limits of the stability test as a measure of maturity. And second, it exposes the potential limitations of third-party testing, which many of us rely on. The composting environment must be optimal for the microbes in order for a stability test to have meaning. This means that the moisture content of the compost must be adjusted to 40 to 50 percent and allowed to equilibrate for some time at room temperature. If I re-wetted the material and allowed it to equilibrate for 24 hours before doing a stability test, it should suggest that it's stable. However, the stability test also assumes that there are microbes in the compost, which is not the case with the countertop composter, where the high heat kills the microbes. In the next video, I will explore how aerated static pile composting may lead us to think we have mature compost when in fact we don't. My name is John Paul. I'm a soil scientist and waste management specialist. Thank you.